glad you could join me. In this tutorial, we're going to learn some quick and easy techniques as well as a few tricks to processing infrared images. Also, we're going to take a quick look at combining images in NIC software's HDR Pro 2. So let's get started. In this tutorial, we're going to go ahead and process the three images that you see across the screen here. First, we're going to merge them in NIC Software HDR Pro 2, and then we're going to process them into a final infrared image. Um, before we get started, though, I do want to talk a little bit about the images that you're looking at. As you can see, my infrared images start out of the camera in this greenish, bluish, goldish um, color. And the reason that it, has, that it has this is because I've converted a camera um, through LifePixel with a super color infrared conversion. So these images are actually right out of camera with no processing attached to them. If you are... Um, don't have a camera that's been converted and even if you do but you're not able to set a white balance like I am a custom white balance your images may be coming out of camera uh, in a magenta or red color and this would also be true if you're using an infrared filter so I'm going to show you a quick trick um, to correct that magenta or to do your best to um, get most of that magenta out before you start processing so I'll show you that in a minute so let's get started we're going to go ahead and select our three images and um, and then we're going to, uh, and I'm in Lightroom, as you can see, Lightroom 5. If you right click, you're going to get a whole list of opportunities here, either to edit in or export or whatever. It turns out that for the NIC software, the uh, HDR um, FX Pro software 2, that you actually need to use the export feature. It is not under the edit in. As you can see, it's not in my list of other programs. So to get to the HDR um, FX Pro 2, we're going to go ahead and hit export and then click um, the link. So it takes a minute here for the process to start. You can see up in the top right that it's getting the, re uh, the images ready. One of the things that I like about um, HDR Effects Pro 2 is the screen that's about to come up. It allows you to st uh, start off, it shows you your three images, it tells you what their exposure compensation is. So you can see that I have one at negative, just about negative two, one at um, a um, mid exposure and then when it positive to exposure. So the first thing you'll notice is that it gives you this option, but this little slider here can allow you to change that um, any way you so desire in terms of how it blends or how it's starting out. The other thing that I like about um, this software is that if you click on the little loop here, it brings up um, a tool that does two things. One, it gives you an opportunity to check out your ghosting. And this is good if you've got wind movement um, or you're shooting a person and there's like slight variation in the movement and it allows you through choosing the slide at the top um, it says ghost reference image if you click a different one this will be the reference um, referencing image so you can pick either it doesn't have anything um, any impact on the blend other than that will be the um, image it uses to remove ghosting so that'll be the base image but it doesn't have any impact on the way the uh, exposures blend together. The other thing that I really like about it is this chromatic aberration. If you check this, you'll see that it's blown up and it allows you to sort of drag around to your highlighted spots and make a decision about whether or not you see any uh, chromatic aberration in the image. In this case, I've actually already said it, there was a slight um, yellow tint, so I've moved towards the blue and a little bit slight red. Um, edging, there's fringing that happens in the bright areas. So you, it allows you to correct for that in this in this phasing you don't have to worry about it later um, you can choose your strength of ghosting I tend to leave it at 80 percent and I always have alignment checked so once you've gone through this process and you've made some of these early decisions you just want to go ahead and say create HDR once the software is done actually merging your images you're going to end up in HDR effects Pro 2 um, and this looks exactly like it would if you opened it straight out of Photoshop as a plugin or out of Lightroom as a, as a, um, a plugin. This is it's the same screens. Um, in this particular instance, I'm actually not going to process this photo any further in the software. Um, the goal here was just to get three images that were, were blended together. So I could go further here and I could add all kinds of different adjustments if I so choose, but I'm actually just going to use a different part of my process for that. So for now, all I want to do is go ahead and I'm going to hit save. And this is actually going to save my image and return the file back to Lightroom.
All right, so this is our merged image. Probably have a couple of them, excuse me. This is our merged image. Um, okay, so what we're going to do here is just right click and open in um, Adobe Photoshop. I use the Creative Cloud. There's two choices you can have here. You can open um, straight away into the program. And because this is already a TIFF, it will open up in Camera Raw. But if you were opening any image, and this is just kind of a side note, if you open up into Photoshop as a smart uh, object and then double click the smart object it will take you into camera raw so we're gonna go ahead and just do it this way we're gonna say go ahead and edit a copy so I can always retain this file all right and there we are into camera raw um, at this stage I'm probably gonna add just a little bit of clarity and see what it does it kind of darkens up the darks a little bit and maybe a little bit of contrast there isn't a lot that I need to do at this point because I can always come back to camera raw through the camera raw filter so I don't need to finish it here the other thing I like to do right away is also look for these little red um, indicators of blown highlights and I like to pull the highlights back and I do this in this particular um, tool because I think it does the best job so pull that down till most of the red is gone and then I'm gonna go ahead, go ahead and open my image this image that keeps popping up is actually where we're headed next. Um, I'm gonna leave this image for a second just to show you a trick on how to deal with red or magenta images. If you are shooting infrared and you're using a filter, <coughs> or excuse me, a camera, raw, um, a camera that's been converted but doesn't allow you to set a custom white balance that'll correct for this, your images are going to be magenta. And when I first saw this, I was a bit freaked out. I didn't know how best to deal with it. Actually taking this straight away into um, black and white really doesn't work. So here is um, one quick, easy way to take care of most of the color, not all of it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and um, correct for this magenta color in this image. And how we're going to do that is we're going to select the camera raw filter. So if you go to your filter menu and choose camera raw filter, camera raw will open back up for you. The first step in the correction is to take the temperature and drag it all the way to blue. And in the second step here, we're going to take the tint and we're going to drag this down to kind of as close to gray as we can get. Um, if you wanted to, you could add some clarity and do some other things to this image, but you don't really need to do a lot of processing depending on um, your preferred method. You can actually do a lot of that work uh, later or reopen Camera Raw to do it. So we're going to hit OK and it'll bring it in. And then the next part of this trick is to go ahead and under your layers adjustments, choose hue and saturation. Go to master, choose magenta. It might end up being that you're going to choose uh, blue, green, whatever. It's going to be whatever the predominant color is. And you'll see in our next example that we're actually going to choose either yellows or reds. Um, but we're going to choose magenta in this particular instance. And we're going to choose the plus dropper. And we're going to select an area here that's probably the darkest. And then we're going to drag the saturation all the way down. And for the most part, we've taken out all of the color. And you can see down here in the bottom right corner, there's a little bit of magenta left. So if we just click around in here, you'll see that it'll start going away as well. And if it doesn't go away completely, you might choose a different color, like in this case, red. Pick the eyedropper plus sign again and go ahead and do some clicking to get rid of it. You don't need to... Um, so and then drag the saturation slider on the reds down. Um, you don't need to get rid of everything because really your next step is going to be to take this further into a black and white process. But this gets it nice and cleaned up. Your darks are where they're supposed to be. Your lights are where they're supposed to be. And it's a quick and easy way to get rid of the magenta. Okay, in the next part of this tutorial, we're actually gonna go back to our original image and process this. Now, if you recall, this is an image that's, uh, three images that have been merged in HDR FX Pro 2, and um, this is the final resulting image. And we're not ready to actually do our process yet, although you'll see a lot of faux color inf uh, infrared. This is an example of what I could produce and just leave it in this format. But I'm actually gonna take this to black and white. But before we do that, there's a few steps. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is actually swap channels and I'll show you what that is but we're basically going to reverse the red and blue channel and the point of that is to actually get the colors where they belong because right now the sky is in the red channel and we want it to be in the blue channel so that when we go into our black and white processing 
the uh, blue and red sliders will actually have the right effect and right now they're going to have the opposite effect so that's why we swap here we choose in the layers adjustment um, channel mixer so you just go ahead and grab that and this brings up I happen to be in the blue channel right now um, so we're going to start with that one but as you can see the blue channel shows 100 and in this case on the blue output channel so that's what you're looking at right here where my mouse is um, at the top says blue and that's why it's showing that the blue channel is 100 we're going to reverse this and we're going to make red 100 we're going to wipe out the blue channel and make that zero now we're going to go ahead to the red channel which is at the top as you can see here the red channel is showing 100 and blue channel is showing zero so we're going to go ahead wipe out the red channel and add back in blue oops okay so now you can see um, that the sky has turned blue and that's what we want we want the the software to recognize that um, where the channels belong and in this case we want the blue sky although I'm not going to keep it um, but I could in fact keep it I could finish the rest of my process and go to pure black and white everywhere else and have a blue sky in this image if I chose but because that's not what I'm shooting for I've got a couple more steps to do our next step is to get rid of the yellow hue in the image so again we're going to go back just like we did a minute ago um, on that magenta image and we're going to choose hue and saturation again and in this case because the primary color remaining is a yellow we're going to take the uh, where it says master and we're going to choose yellows we're going to choose the plus eyedropper and we're going to just pick some place in the yellow range I'm choosing a darker area just to start but I could have to click anywhere and we're going to drag the saturation down and as you can see I've wiped out most of the color in this image except for things that remained in the blue so I could stop here I could go further processing and leave uh, the little bits of blue that exist there's a lot of options but this is a good starting point for the rest of the IR process so this image is what I would consider our starting point for our infrared processing and all those other steps actually just led to this moment. So um, when I sit down to go process an infrared image, from this point forward, I really like to start off with Silver Effects Pro 2, also a piece of the Nix software program. If you own the suite, you'll, um, you might have this little floaty menu here, which will have all of your programs in it. And if you don't, you should be able to find it under your filter, um, air, filter menu where it should say Nick collection and as you can see mine is grayed out so one of the reasons or the reason that that's grayed out is because my um, what I've got selected here is actually a layer adjustment and not um, an image adjust an image layer so to get the proper uh, layer in place for us to use our filters we can do a couple of different things you can either flatten your image which would be under layer flatten image or you can merge visible which will also basically flatten the image or you can do what I like to do which is actually um, create a merged layer while retaining all the sub layers and the way to do that is to select all of your layers right click and you'll see where it says merge visible but before you click this hold down the alt key and then hit merge visible and what will happen is you get a combined layer now this is our working layer and if we needed to, we could go back and do further adjustments um, on these uh, sub layers if needed. So now that we've got a layer um, selected, you'll see that the Nick collection is back available. And I'm going to choose Silver Effects Pro 2. So once we've selected that, it takes a moment to open. And here you can see everything in our image has gone to black and white. Um, get this all in the screen. Hang on a second. There we go. All right. Um, often I start with a preset just because it's easy. And um, one of the things I like about this program is it shows you here a bunch of different looks that you can start with. In this particular instance, I'm going to start with um, high structure harsh. The um, high contrast is a bit too dark, overexposed is a bit too light, so on and so forth. So um, I'm going to start with the high structure. And you see it kind of pops it all into color here. 
and um, gives it a little bit more vibrancy. Now, from this point, I don't uh, generally just stay with a preset. These presets are simply starting points that um, Nick has put together and for suggestions. But on the right hand side, you'll see these adjustments and there's all kinds of things that you can do here. Um, and it's very specific. If you happen to have these arrows clicked and you're only seeing something that looks like this where it shows brightness, contrast, and structure, definitely rotate these arrows because underneath these are all kinds of really cool things that you can do that are very, very specific. Um, I'm gonna start off with some fine structure and I tend to kind of click around. You can drag the sliders. I um, kind of like the click effect and see how it goes and then back off where I need it. I'm gonna amplify my blacks a little bit. Um, I'm actually gonna bring down my shadows with through the brightness and maybe add some soft contrast. So this is where I'm starting. Now the next thing that I like to do is to go ahead and try the color filter. And this is one of the areas that come into play when you are using, uh, when you do the color mixer, excuse me. If you didn't do the mixing channel and switch those reds and blues, this color filter wouldn't work. It would be reversed. I mean, it would work, but it would be in a reverse way. So where you expect a certain result um, in the channels, you would actually have the opposite effect. So I like to start off with um, the red, um, especially when I'm doing infrared because this darkens up the sky quite a bit. Um, and then uh, from there, you can actually scroll down and you'll see that you have all of these um, channel adjustments for and it's particular sensitivities so you know my suggestion is to actually play with these things and see what they do so if i drag red down does anything happen no not really um how about the red the yellows excuse me you'll see that there's some things in the very center there that are getting a little bit lighter how about the greens now this one the blues is starting to work and if you recall in after i had done my um, channel swap and i desaturated those yellows there was a little bit of blue cast left on the windscreens of all these cars and so here you'll see that this channel is actually affecting those windshields so you can make a decision about whether you want that to be brighter or darker just again it's it's total preference the blue channel will have a similar effect maybe not so dramatic because there weren't any dark blues as opposed to the cyan's so anyway i would say to play with these and make sure that you get what you want it's very very personal preference one of the last things i do is i want to check for blown highlights and areas of shadow that are just simply too dark that we've lost any kind of detail. And to do that, if you come down to the bottom right hand of the screen, it says loop and histogram. If you click in here, you'll see um, on the highlight side, it'll show you the zone um, 10, which is your brightest uh, whites. And there's a little bit of, there's a few lines here, um, right on this same, um, piece of chrome in this car in the back. It was the same highlight that was blown earlier. It's not too bad, so I'm not gonna worry about it. If you go down and select on the zero, that shows you your darkest highlights. And you can tell here that I've got a lot of highlights, excuse me, darkest shadows. I have a lot of shadows that are really, really dark, meaning that there's no detail there. So the one way, one, one of the many ways that you can um, adjust for that is here in the middle of the screen, you'll see where it shows shadows and highlights. This is how you kind of make those corrections. And as I pull the shadows up, you'll see that um, my little yellow hash marks here are improving. And you know, there is no real reason to pull them back completely um, because these are shadows under the cars. And in theory, there's really not a lot of detail there, but I did bring some out in the front here. So we get a little bit more of this grass showing. So we're going to hit OK and bring this now back into Photoshop. Takes a second for it to apply. You'll see that it starts its mask, it does everything, and then it, it absorbs it all and creates a layer. And the layer will tell you that it is a um, Silver Effects Pro 2 layer. Okay, now that Silver Effects Pro 2 is done processing our image in black and white, it has created its layer for us. I'm going to actually do um, one more process to this, and I'm, for that I'm going to use um, Color Effects Pro 4. And in this uh, software, one of my favorites um, that I use in a lot of my work is the tonal contrast. So once this opens up, it's all on the screen. 
All right. And as you can see, I'm not kidding about it being one of my favorite. It was a pre-select. Um, a lot of the NYX software is what they call sticky, so your last adjustment will always come up. So in this case, I was using tonal contrast uh, earlier in the day. So one of the ways to see what this is done is to hit compare. So this is our original image as it came in, and you can see what it's done with the tonal contrast. And you, again, like the other sliders, play with this and see what you come up with. You can you know, add uh, additional contrast. Oops, that came back on me. Um, you can also lessen it. it. It It's completely preference. In addition to tonal contrast, which is uh, a look I prefer in my infrared, I like it to be kind of contrasty and bright. Um, there's a whole array of presets uh, to choose from. And if, as you can see, I have a few things here that are yellow starred. That's how you indicate what are your favorites. If you select favorites here, they will show up on the floaty menu um, that I showed you a minute ago in Photoshop. And I'll show you again so you'll see what I'm talking about. For me, this is pretty good. I've added just a little bit more depth to the image. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now there's a lot of other things in Color Effects Pro, other filters that you could use to enhance your image. Um, again, personal preference. So while this is working, I'll show you, um, well, I guess I won't because it doesn't want me to. It should be done here in a minute. Okay, so that's finished. Um, if you look here, this list under Color Effects Pro 4, this is list represents everything that I had checked um, with a gold star on the program. So it's kind of nice that it retains it because this is a quick and easy way to get back to those um, filter options. So, all right, now that we're done, we're actually nearly done with this image. I like the effect that I have. Um, I think that it's got a nice contrasty look, which is known to infrared, but the one thing that it's missing is sort of that well-known glow that a lot of infrared images have. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you um, a way to create that glow. Now, we could have used the glow filter in um, Color Effects Pro 4. It's a great filter. Um, it's completely useful. I have just learned to like this technique better that I'm about to show you. And so it's really my go-to, particularly on my infrared images. So we're going to start off um, with the tonal contrast layer selected, and we're going to duplicate the layer. So you can either go to layer, duplicate layer. You can right click and choose duplicate layer, or you can do command or control J on your keyboard. So we're going to go ahead and hit duplicate. Don't really worry about what the name is. You can name it if you want, but you don't need to. On this layer, we're going to select screen. So we're going to go to our blending modes, which normally uh, say no normally say normal. And we're going to choose screen. And you'll see that this image got really bright on us. And that's OK, because we're going to uh, reduce that uh, brightness in just a moment. We're now going to duplicate the layer again. and. It Again, just hit OK for the title. And in this case, we're going to actually choose Multiply from the Blend layer. And you'll see that it gets nice and dark. Now, on this Multiply layer, bef before we make any other adjustments, we're going to add a Gaussian blur or Gaussian blur. I guess everybody says it a couple different ways. But if you go to your Filter Blur, you'll see it right here. We're going to go ahead and select it. I tend to like 16. You can make it stronger, you can make it less. But what I like about this is this is a nice um, amount of blur, and we can control the way it impacts our image through the opacity slider. So there's no reason to reduce it here. You know, kind of get in there, um, get a nice feel, and figure that you can change it in just a second. So now that we're here and we've selected it, You've seen that that glow that we got from the screen layer has really been diminished, but the whites and the leaves in the background and in the in the, what's traditionally known to glow in IR is still nice and white. So we're going to now play with the opacity slider on the two layers that we've just created until we get the right mix for this particular image. So I'm going to go ahead and slide this slider down. I always like to come in around the 40s and then move from there. I'm going to select the layer below. If you remember, this is our screen layer. I'm also going to reduce that into the 40s. All right, I'm going to bring up the blur a little bit to give this a little bit of glow in the background. And 
Now, so I think we're fairly done, but the last step is the image overall is just a little bit flat and a little bit dark. So to fix this, we're gonna do one last layer and then we'll be finished. And that layer is going to be a levels adjustment. So as you can see, all of our histogram information is a little bit to the left. So we're gonna drag the, hi uh, the highlights in and you'll see that that popped up. And we're gonna drag our mid-tones down just a hair to add back some of that contrasty uh, effect that we like in our infrared. All right, and there you have it, completed image. Now, last but not least, we're gonna crop this image down a bit because there's a whole bunch of useless information in the front, in our foreground. I'm gonna go hit OK and we are done. So that's it, that's the process. That's how to get a glow, a customized glow, I might add, in your image through this process. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. If you're interested further in um, LifePixel, um, which is the company that I use to convert my camera. You can find that on my blog. Um, I will sh uh, link to that on my blog. I will post uh, a link at the end of this video, as well as information on um, software through my website as well. So I hope you found this helpful and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks again for watching.